Magandang araw po sa ating lahat. Once again po, magandang araw. No? Uh, in behalf of Far Eastern Evangelical Theological Seminary, we're continuing our studies on Romans and Galatians. And we are now on Romans chapter 8, verses 12 to 13. Last time we were able to discuss verses 1 to 4, and the second part is in verses 5 to 11. And now on the third part, which is with regards to the ministry of the Spirit, is in verses 12 to 13. No. So our topic now is in that's what was our thing whiteboard. The Spirit empowers us for victory. No. The Spirit empowers us for victory. In Romans chapter 8, verse 12 to 13. Only God has the capability to fill our life with song. Only He is the one who can save us and redeem us. And as a result, we are in tremendous, tremendous death to Him. And that is exactly what Paul is saying in Romans chapter 12 and uh, Romans chapter 8 verses 12 and 13. Sa ating pag-umpisa, yan po muna natin, basahin natin ito sa wikang Tagalog. No? Romans chapter 8 verse 12 to 13. Mga kapatid, wala tayong pananagutin, pananagutang sundin ang mga hilig ng laman upang mamuhay ayon sa katawang mga halaman. Sapagkat mamatay kayo kung namumuhay kayo ayon sa katawang mga halaman, ngunit kung pinapatay ninyo sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu ang mga gawa ng katawang mga halaman, mabubuhay kayo. Okay. As kong basahin sa English, sabi nyo, Therefore, brethren, we are debtors, not to the flesh, to live after the flesh, but for if you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you live through the Spirit, do kill the deeds of the body, you shall live. This is not just a message to you, it is a message for us, no? And it is a very important reminder that I am in no death at all to the flesh. Wala po tayong utang sa laman. For that's part of the life of deadness that I no longer am engaged in. Thanks to the Lord Jesus Christ. And so, I owe the flesh nothing. No. But I am in debt. We, yun po ang implikasyon dito. Tayo po ay walang utang sa laman. Pero tayo may utang kanino sa Diyos. That is the implication. No. I am in debt to God with a tremendous debt. And that's really what I want us to understand today. No. Uh, meron po isang pastor na nagsulat, si Richard Baxter, sa kanyang aklat, The Reformed Pastor. No? Anais ko pong uh, gamitin ang quotation sa kanyang aklat. E ganito po siya sabi niya, Take it to yourself, lest you live in those sins which you, pre which you preach against, and others, and lest you be guilty of that you daily condemn. Will you make it your work to magnify God when you have done dishonor Him as much as others? Will you proclaim Christ's governing power and yet condemn it and reveal yourselves? Will you preach His laws and willfully break them? If sin be evil, why do you live in it? If it be not, why do you dissuade men from it? If it be dangerous, how dare you venture on it? If not, be not, why do you tell men so? If that threatenings be true, why do you not feel them? If they with them, if they be false, why do you need righteously troubled men? Why do you righteously trouble men with them and put them into such fright without a cause? Do you know the judgment of God that they who commit such things are worthy of death? And yet will you do them? Thou teacher, no? That teaches another, thou makest thou bo thy boast of the law, thou through breaking the law, dishonoring God. What shall the same tongue speak evil, the same that speaks against evil? Shall thou slip, censor, and slander, and backbite your neighbor, that cry down this and the like in others? Take heed to yourself, lest you you cry down sin, and yet you do not overcome it. Lest while you seek to bring it down in others, you bow to it and become a slave yourselves. O brethren, it is easier to chide at sin than to overcome it. That's the end of the quotation. I find that a very important warning in our life. And Baxter went on to say, Many a tailor goes in rags that made costly clothes for others. 
and many a cook scarcely clicks his fingers when he had dressed for others the most costly meal. And so I want to say at the very beginning that what I say to you today is it is to me as well and has been as I have prepared to share with you. Now the responsibility that we are confronting in Romans chapter 8 verse 12 to 13 as we go through this marvelous chapter is the responsibility to what? To kill sin in our lives. No, That is our uh, responsibility. Ang ginamit sa isang sa ibang sali, no, is to mortify. No, The word mortify means to kill. And the text is basically saying, since we have no obligation to the flesh, we better be about killing sin in our bodies. We need to be putting it to them. No. <clears throat> now, just to set you in mind as to what Paul's purpose is in this great chapter, remember, saan nga ito nag-umpisa? Ang chapter 8? Anong salita? Nag-umpisa ang chapter 8? Kaya nga, wala ng kahatulan. That is the very theme of the chapter. That is the best news we ever receive. No? We will never be condemned. We will never be punished for our sins. That is the sweetest sound of any word that could ever fallen from the lips of God. It is a pardon to a condemned criminal who sits in death row. For we are condemned to an eternal punishment to hell. We sat in death row, row waiting God's execution. We were indeed guilty and the Savior delivered a pardon and said, There will be no condemnation. For I have already died in the, in the behalf of the criminal. What joyous news, incredible news, ang ibinigay sa atin ng banal na Espiritu. At kung ang uh, katotohanan ito ay nagpapasaya ng ating puso, no? kung hindi naman, medyo may problema ho yata tayo. Medyo malamig na siguro ang ating pusong mapagpasalamat dapat sa Panginoon. You see, the promise of no condemnation is the last in the string of pearls. No? The pearl that are the result of justification. As Paul outlined the doctrine of salvation as or justification by grace through faith in chapter 4, then he moved from there into the wonderful pearls of blessings that come as a result of justification. We have peace with God. We have the grace of God. We have the hope from God. We have the love from God. We have the life from God. We have the holiness from God. We have freedom from God. And we could have the capacity now to bear fruit for God, which is our spiritual fruit service and glory of all glories is no condemnation. No condemnation, no judgment will ever come upon us who are in Christ Jesus. Maliwanag po yan sa mga talatang uno. And that is so incomprehensible and so marvelous a truth that the Apostle Paul does not just leave us with the truth. But he marches us through the 8th chapter of Romans which tell us why the truth is in the truth. No? And it tells us it is because of the great and wonderful work of the Holy Spirit. Last time, last time we discussed about the nature and the work of the Holy Spirit. And so in chapter 8, no, the, we talk about the life in the Spirit. No, the life in the Spirit. The marvelous reality of no condemnation is not only due to the work of Christ, it is due to the work of the Holy Spirit in applying to us the work of Christ. Christ does the work and the Spirit applies it to us. Anyway, ang gumawa po, no, kaya ho tayo may justification, is Jesus Christ. No? Pero ang ginawa ng Banal Espiritu, ini-apply ng Banal Espiritu sa ating buhay ang ginawa ng ating Pahay sa Kristo. Because wala ho mangyayari kung hindi ito i-apply. And God must apply it and the Holy Spirit ang gumawa po to apply it sa ating mga buhay. And so we're moving through the chapter, no, we're noting seven aspects of the Spirit's work in our behalf that demonstrates to us that we will never be condemned for sin. No, a great, great chapter. Let me remind you of the ones we've already discussed. First, no, ano nga nakita natin sa verse 2 and verse 3? Anong ginawa ng Bala Spirito? Yan. So the first uh, benefit, no? Benefit is... The Holy Spirit frees us from the law of sin and death. No. So, 
Yan pa nga ulit natin sa verses 2 and 3. Freedom from the law of sin and death. Because we don't have God as the Holy Spirit changed our status from a, from condemnation to a no condemnation. No. So the first part that we have discussed in verse 2 and 3 Kaya wala tayong condemnation because of the freedom from the law of sin and death. No? At ang gumawa po nito na palaya sa atin, ang pumutol ng tanikala, ang nag-alis ng lak o kandado, ay walang iba kundi ang banal na spirito. Pinalaya na tayo from the power of sin, pinalaya tayo ng ating Paiso Cristo from the penalty of sin, which is death. The second thing about the ministry of the Spirit is, ano na sa verse 4? Enabling us to fulfill God's law. So enables us to what? fulfill God's law. Hindi po ang para display, no? Ibinigay ang kautusan upang ipakita sa atin ang standard ng Dios, no? At nakita ho natin na ang kautusan ho hindi natin kayang masunod. Hindi ito, hindi ito pwede makapagligtas sa atin. Hindi niya tayo pwede i-justify. Hindi niya tayo pwede i-sanctify. Kung hindi wala ko siyang magawa, no? Ang tangin niya ang magawa ay pakita ang kasalanan. Pero ngayon sa mga mana ng pulataya, no? Sa mga mana ng pulataya, mayroon na pong bagong role ang uh, ang law, no? Mayroon ng bagong role. Hindi na po siya nagko-condemn sa atin, kundi sa magitan ng banal na spirito, no? He enables us no, he gives us the power. What yun yung sabi natin, enabling. He gives us the enabling power, the capacity, no, uh, and the capability to what? To fulfill God's law. To fulfill God's law, and that is the the ministry of uh, the Holy Spirit. Sa halip po na suway natin ng kautusan, the Holy Spirit, ano, enables us to fulfill. And so we become pleasing to God because we are doing His law, no? And that again is a wonderful work of the Holy Spirit. Hindi po sa ating kapangyarihan, but with the power of the Holy Spirit. At yan po ay totoo sa mga ano? Sa mga taong lumalakad ng ayon sa banal na spirito. Pangatlong bagay ho na nakita natin na ginawa ko ng banal na spirito is what? He changed our nature. Yan, no? <clears throat> He gives us a new, He changes our nature, no? He changes our nature. So what is our new nature now? What is our old nature? Ano yung? Yung? Okay. Tapos anong ginawa niyo? Parang nadududa kaya ata sa ano? Yan, no? Okay. So, sabi natin, ang sabi ng Biblia, we are now a new creation. Verses, ano to? Verses 5 to 11, no? Verse 4 and verses 5 to 11, no? And someday, no? Ang pagbabago ko sa atin ng Panginoon is in the inside, no? Ang pagbabago sa atin ng Panginoon is in the inside, No? <clears throat> At someday, we will be changed also in the outside. No. Ang mga spirit na nagpalaya sa atin from the law of sin and death because the spirit enables us to keep God's righteous law and because the spirit transforms our nature that we are no longer are under condemnation. Also, we bless the Holy Spirit for His marvelous words in our lives. <clears throat> now, for our study today, we come to the fourth of those seven elements. No, The fourth is... The Spirit empowers us for victory over flesh. No? The Spirit empowers us for victory over flesh. <clears throat> so, ito ay magkahawig sa ating sa tinalakay on the second point in verse 4. But focuses so much on what the Holy Spirit does as on what we do and what we allow the Holy Spirit to accomplish His work in us. No? So, ang focus po natin dito is kung ano ang magagawa ng Banal Espiritu at yung ating pakikipagtulungan sa Banal Espiritu 
para ma-accomplish niya ang kanyang trabaho sa ating mga buhay. So the focus on verse 12 and 13 is not on his accomplishments, accomplishments only but with our obligation also. So meron tayong obligasyon for us to live for to become, no? victorious in our Christian livings. And that, that's why it says we are debtors, no? And we must kill the flesh. And of course, it implies and even says through the power of the spirit, but we must be in both. So the verse that so these two verses become a demonstration to us of the call of God upon us to practically get about the business of killing sin in our lives. And we must be about this we must do uh, this kind of business. You know? It is a very practical exhortation. It is God commanding us to do something which we are able to do. No. Nung hindi pa po tayo mahal ng plataya, hindi natin kaya. But because of the Spirit, now, kaya ho nating patayin ang kasalanan. No. God never asked us to do what we can do. That would be an impossibility. And when He asked us to kill sin, no, He says in verse 13, through the through the spirit and we remember that if every christian possesses the spirit maliwanag po sa bible ang lahat po ng mananampalataya ay nagtataglay ng espiritu ng diyos ang sinabi sa atin sa verse 9 sabi nga sa may basa ko sa verse 9 ngunit hindi na kayo namumuhay ayon sa laman kundi ayon sa espiritu Sa katunayan, naninirahin sa inyo ang Espiritu ng Diyos. Kung wala sa isang tao ang Espiritu ni Kristo, hindi kay Kristo ang tao iyan. <clears throat> Maliwala po yan, no? Kung wala sa atin ang Espiritu ng Diyos, wala, wala ka kay Kristo. No? So, ang Espiritu ng Diyos ang ebidensya na ikaw ay na kay Kristo at si Kristo ay nasa sayo. No? Kaya nga, kung tayo, last time we talked about kung ikaw ay nasa Espiritu, ang iyong pamumuhay, ang iyong, ikaw ay lumalakad ayon sa Espiritu. We discussed that last time. Ikaw ay lumalakad ayon sa Espiritu. Pangalawa, anong masyabi natin last time? Hindi ka lang lumalakad. Verse 5 to 11. Ang sabi yan? Ikaw, ang pangiisip mo ay ayon sa Espiritu. Mga spiritual na bagay. At ang hinahanap na nais mo ay ang sa Espiritu. No? <clears throat> so, maliwanag po sa sinabi sa verse 9, He am not in the flesh, but in the spirit. And so, kung nasa, nasa atin daw ang malalang na spirito, no? siya po ay kay Kristo. Pero kung wala sa iyong malalang spirito, wala ka kay Kristo. So, those that are His have the spirit of God. Because we have the spirit, we have now the capacity to kill sin in our lives. That is the discussion of Apostle Paul in verses 12 and 13, no? At yun po ang ating pag-aaralan ngayon. Now, as we look at this matter of dealing with sin, of overwhelming the flesh, I want you to give several points, no? First, first point na natin, under this subject, the Spirit empowers us victory, no? First is, the power of victory, no? Number one, the power of of victory. Saan mo natin ginawa yan? Ha? This is the practical application of the command in verse 12 to 13. Which says that the power of victory is so magita na ano? Through the Holy Spirit. No? The power of victory is through the Holy Spirit. Siya po ay maliwanag sa verse 13. Parebasa nga sa atin verse 13. Sapagkat namamatay kayo kung namumuhay kayo ayon sa katawang makalaman. Ngunit kung pinapatay ninyo sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu, ang mga gawa ng katawang makalaman, mabubuhay kayo. So, paano daw po natin papatayin ang kasalanan no? sa pamamagitan ng paggamit ng power of... What power of ito? Power of the Holy Spirit. So, the power na available sa atin is the power of the Holy Spirit. It is of our pow power of victory. No? It is our power of victory. At yung, mas maganda po, may Biblia kayo dyan, you need to underline that portion. No? That the victory, the power of victory is through the Spirit of God. 
That's the power. If we're going to know victory over the flesh, if we are going to know the killing of sin in our lives, it's going to be in the power of the Holy Spirit. It's so wonderful, you know, to be aware of the fact as Christian that we possess the Spirit of God. No? Because if we did not have, we do not have the supernatural power, no? Hindi ho natin kayang magbago ng kaisipan, ng bago ng puso, no? Uh, magbago ng sarili nating mga pag-uugali, no? Hindi ho natin kaya yon, no? Hindi ho natin kayang mapagtagumpayan ang ating laman, no? Hindi rin ho natin kayang patayin ang kasalanan at mapagtagumpayan ang kasalanan kung tayo ho ay mananangan lang sa sarili nating kakayanan at wala po ang kapangyarihan ng banal na espiritu. It's a very simple reason for that. Flesh cannot overcome flesh, no? Flesh can victory over flesh. Sin can uh, gain the victory over sin. Humanness cannot defeat humanness. And so we needed a transformation. And thus the verses in 5 to 11 ang sinasabi po sa atin. Once we have been transformed so that the life within us is now the life of God in the presence of His indwelling Spirit, we now have the power in the Spirit to overcome the flesh. Kung sabi ho natin na ang Banal Spirit na ang nananahan sa ating buhay at hinahayaan ho natin ang Banal Spirit to transform us sa so, magitan ng kapangyarihan ng Banal Spirit, kaya na natin no, patayin si kasalanan. No? Humanness cannot be overcome by humanness. Yun ho na pag natin sa chapter 7. No? Sabi nga ni Apostol Pablo, chapter 7 verse 18, ano sinabi ni Apostol Pablo? Alam kong walang mabuting bagay na naninirahan sa aking katawang makalaman. May kakayahan akong naisin ang mabuti, ngunit hindi ko nga lamang ito magawa. Yan, makita natin, no? <coughs> that is the flesh. In other words, when I look into myself, I find no resource for doing good. No? I find no ability to overcome sin. I find no capacity to gain the victory over the flesh. And he reiterates that again and again and again in the 7th chapter. And in the 8th chapter, same thing in verse 5. Ano sabi sa verse 5, chapter, uh, chapter 8? Ang mga namumuhay ayon sa hilig ng laman ay walang pinapahalagahan kundi ang mga bagay na ukol sa laman. Yan po ang ginagawa ng sana sa laman, verse 7. Kaya nga, kapag itinutuo ng tao ang kanyang pag-iisip sa mga hilig ng laman, siya nagiging kaaway ng Diyos sapagkat hindi siya nagpapasakop sa batas ng Diyos at sa diyang hindi niya ito magagawa. So makita natin that the flesh cannot please God. The flesh cannot obey the law of God. The flesh cannot overcome the flesh. It cannot bring about a victory over sin. Hindi niya ko kaya tayo bigyan ng tagumpay kung mananangan ka lang sa sarili mong katawan, sarili mong kakayanan, sa flesh. So what we're saying then is that apart from the power of God, Maliban mo sa tulong ng kapangyarihan ng Banal Espiritu sa buhay ng bawat isa. Hopeless po ang ating kalalagayan with regards to the set, with regards to the flesh or sin. And there is no capacity within the human within the human flesh, no. Sa buhay ko nang hindi mana ng palataya to deal and to overcome sin. But when the spirit comes in, no? Iyon ang nagbago sa ating buhay. Kaya nga, sinabi sa Bible, no? sabi sa John chapter 3, yung born again is regeneration. God, the Holy Spirit, empowering us, giving us the capacity. And by the presence of the Holy Spirit in our life, there comes now the capacity to overcome the flesh. And we walk in the Spirit according to His power, and we overcome the flesh. Now, just to make a little mental note somewhere along in there, your theological file, the spirit is almost synonymous with power. And I think the most graphic illustration is found in Acts chapter 1 verse 8. No? Acts chapter 1 verse 8. Well, Pasinan mo natin, ano siya rabi ng ating Paiso Cristo? Sa gawa kapitulo 1, talatang 8. So, bye-bye niyo po sa inyong mga talat sa Biblia and you take note of the verses. Ano po? Subalit tatanggap kayo ng kapangyarihan pagbaba sa inyo ng Espiritu Santo at kayo magiging mga saksi ko sa Jerusalem, sa buong Judea at sa Samaria at hanggang sa dulo ng Bendig. So makikita ko natin ang equation, no? Ano ba siya yung equation? Equation? Saan magaling ang equation? Pag sinabi natin equation, it comes from the word equals, no? So, 
If you talk about the Holy Spirit, pag sinabi natin equation, the equation of the Holy Spirit, the equal of the Holy Spirit is power. When you read the Holy Spirit, there is always an, an equation of power where the Holy Spirit is. Maliwanag ngayon sa Bible, napakarami mo natin makikita mga talata. Power, the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit is power. What kind of power? Power for what? Power to overcome the flesh. Power to overcome the disabilities of being human. Power to, gain, power to gain victory over the body, desires, and objectives. That's the kind of power na binibigay ng Malal na Spirito. It's interesting to note as you move further along the book of Acts that you will see this, uh, this again and again. Wherever the Holy Spirit is, no, there is power. For example, in Acts chapter 6, no, when, the, when uh, we're going to choose out men who could serve, no, who were men of high reputation spiritually, the text said that you were to look for men full of faith and of the Holy Spirit. And when they found one of those men, they said he was full of faith and power. And so you look for someone full of faith and the Holy Spirit, and you'll get someone full of faith and power. Because having the Holy Spirit is equal to having the power of God. I repeat, pag meron ka pong manal Espiritu, it is equal to having the power of God. When the Holy Spirit was moving and working in marvelous ways, in the 8th chapter of Acts, no, meron isang simon din noon, no? Nakita ho niya yung kapangyarihan at nais niyang bilhin ang kapangyarihan yon, no? Na nanggagaling sa banal na espiritu. It is the power to speak the message of God and the power to overcome the flesh. No, ipinangaral po ni Apostol Pablo o Pastor Pedro, Apostol Pedro ang ating Payaso Kristo sa Gawa Kapitologis, no? Gawa Kapitologis, Tulatan 38. Ito po ang nabanggit ng ating apostol, Gawa Kapitologis, Tulatan 38. Alam niyo ang tungkol kay Jesus na taga Nazareth at kung paano pinili siya ng Diyos at pinuspos sa Espiritu Santo at ng kapangyarihan. Alam din niyo na pumunta siya sa iba't ibang dako upang gumawa ng kabutihan sa mga tao okay. at pagliligin. Makita mo natin doon na equated yung ano, the Holy Spirit at ang kapangyarihan. No? The Holy Spirit and the power. Now this is something just isolated in the text of the New Testament. This is the truth that finds its way through the scripture again and again. For example, no, in Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Micah chapter 3 verse 8. Ito po ang sinabi ni Micah, no? O sige, nakita ko sa Tagalog, Micah 3 8. Ah, talo ka ni Leo sa ano? 3 8. Subalit ako'y puspos ng kapangyarihan ng Espiritu ni Yahweh, ng karunungan at kapangyarihan upang ipahayag sa mga Israelita ang kanilang mga kasalanan. Saan daw siya puspos? Espiritu po, Espiritu ni Yahweh. At kung meron siya Espiritu ni Yahweh, saan siya puspos? Kapangyarihan siya. At ano? Karunungan. So, makita nyo, kung nasa iyo ang Espiritu, meron kang kapangyarihan at meron kang karunungan. Kapangyarihan hindi ho sa kapangyarihan ng tao, no? Kung hindi kapangyarihan ng Diyos. Maliwanag ho yan sa sinabi ni Sikaraya, na Sikaria, sabi niya, Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord. At muli po binanggit ho ito, uh, muli, no, ipinahayag ng kapanganakan ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo sa, Mar sa Lucas, no? Lucas Kapitulo 1, Talatang 35. Sumagot ang anghel, sa sa iyo ang Espiritu Santo at mapapasayaling ka sa kapangyarihan ng kataas-taasan Diyos. Yun. Kita ho natin, para ho may panganak ni Maria si ang ating Pwesto Kristo, kinakailangan po ano, ang kapangyarihan at ang kapangyarihan ito ay ano, galing sa banal na Espiritu. And when it says in Romans chapter 1 that Jesus was raised from the dead, it says He was raised from the dead by the power of the Holy Spirit. Spirit, no? That is the available power sa bawat mananampulataya. The power of the Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead. And so, I say over and over again in the scripture, there is a strong message regarding the power of the Holy Spirit. No? Kaya nga sinasabi rin sa Romans chapter 15, verse 19. Romans chapter 15, verse 19. Romans 15, verse 19. 
sa tulong ng mga himala at mga kababalaghan at sa pamamagitan ng kapangyarihan ng Espiritu ng Diyos. Kaya't mula sa Jerusalem hanggang sa Iliriko, ipinangaral ko ang magandang balita tungkol kay Kristo. Ano daw ang suporta ng Banal Espiritu? Sabi doon, through mighty signs and wonders sa magitan ng kapangyarihan ng Banal na Espiritu. And this just goes on and on and like that. In Ephesians chapter 3, a last scripture for our sa Ephesians chapter 3 verse 16, no. Ito po ang siya sabi ng Banal na Kasulatan. Epeso chapter 3 verse 16. Ginadalangin po sa pamamagitan ng kanyang espiritu ay palakasin niya ang inyong buhay spiritual ay sa kanyang kayamanan at kadakilaan. At yan din po ang nagbibigay sa atin ng kalakasang espiritual. So there is a very obvious equation between the Holy Spirit and power. And I want to make that point very strongly because I want you to know that as Christian, as one who possesses the Spirit of God, you have within you the power to overcome sin. That's very important for us to know. Therefore, if you're not seeing victory, no, kung hindi nyo po nakikita at naranasan ang tagumpay sa inyong buhay, ano ang problema? May problema po ba tayo sa lack of power? If you have the Spirit of God, you have the power of God. Pero kung ikaw ay hindi nagtatagumpay, the problem is not with regards to the power. The problem is putting the power into application or into operation. No? Parang ganito po yan. Meron ka hong electric fan. No? Pero electric fan na yan, hindi iikot. Wala na pala tayo electric fan. No? Ang electric fan na yan, hindi iikot kung hindi po sasaksak sa power. The power is available. No? If you will not apply no? the power into its operation, wala hong kwenta yung gadget na meron ka kung without the power. Ganon din po sa ating buhay mga ng palataya. Kaya hindi po tayo nagtatagumpay because we are not applying and putting no, into operation the power that is available to us. Hindi po problema natin ang kulang sa kapangyarihan. Ang problema po natin ay kulang sa paggamit ng kapangyarihan. Tinan po natin, sinasabi po sa atin sa 2 Corinthians chapter 10. No? 2 Corinthians chapter 10. At nais ko pong bigyan ng importansya ang ibang <clears throat> no Why pass on verse 1? Ako si Pablo na ang sabi ng ilan ay mapagkumbaba at mabait kapag kaharap ninyo ngunit matapang kapag wala riyan ay nakikiusap sa inyo alang-alang sa kababaan loob at kabutihan ni Kristo <clears throat> Makita ko natin dito ano? Uh, Paul may be sort of reflecting a somewhat ironic attitude here. And it may have been that he have heard a criticism that Paul was very gentle and very loving when he was there. But when he got away, he wrote this stringing, no, rebuking letters such as 1 Corinthians. And some were condemning him and saying that when he's around, he's a coward. And when he gets out of town, he writes these really hot letters, no? But he lacks real college like coward who will not say what ought to be said when people are present. In fact, you could translate it, some of you perhaps think, I am humble. Parang ganito siya sabi niya, no? Uh, kapag kaharap, hindi siya makapagsalita. No? Kapag nakatalikod, saka na siya sabi. You know ang kanilang komento with regards sa so sinasabi ni Apostol Pablo. Tingnan natin siya sabi sa verse 2. Pinapakiusap ko, huwag ninyo akong piliting magsalita ng mabigat pagdating ko riyan. Dahil kaya, kaya kong gawin iyon sa mga nagsasabing kami na mumuhay ay sa pamamaraan ng mundong ito. Okay. In other words, sabi niya, I hope when I come there, I don't have to be bold. Like I don't want to be bold, in other words, in confronting sin. Who thinks of us? If we walk according to the flesh, no, he says, if I come, I don't want to have to confront those people who are spreading the opinion around that I walk in the flesh. And he's saying, I want to be gentle like Christ is gentle. And if you see me as being humble and appears to be faint-hearted, it's the meekness and gentleness of Christ. But I can be bold if I need to be. I just don't want to be bold. I don't want to have to be bold to confront those who think that I'm walking in the flesh. And, and verse 3, ano sabi niya sa verse 3? Kung nabubuhay man 
kami sa mundong ito, hindi naman kami nakikipaglaban ay sa pamamaraan ng mundong ito. Ano siya sabi mo niya? Hindi ko kami superhuman, no? I have to walk around in this human body for I know this, the war that I fight, I don't fight in what? In the flesh. I don't fight the war in the flesh because the weapons of our warfare is not fleshly, no? But mighty through God to falling down of strongholds. Ang sabi niya sa verse 4 and 5. Ang sandata namin sa pakikipaglaban ay hindi makamundo, kundi ang kapangyarihan ng Diyos na nakapagpapagsak ng mga puta. Sinisira namin ang mga maling pangangatuwiran. Ginagapin namin ang lahat ng pagmamataas laban sa kaalaman tungkol sa Diyos at binibihag namin ang lahat ng isipan upang madutong sumunod kay Kristo. Ano siya sabi Apostol Pablo? Mighty and powerful weapons that God has given us no and the obvious implication that is the weapons come by the power of the Holy Spirit they are able in verse 5 sabi niya to cast down imagination and every high thing high thing that is so itself against the knowledge of God and to bring into captivity every thought to the obedience of Christ that's holy living in the power of the spirit he says i do not walk after the flesh I do not conduct myself according to the flesh. Yes, I am in this human body. Yes, there is, in, is, there is a sense in which I dwell within a house of flesh, but that's not where my war is being fought. I fight with those weapons that are spiritual. What does he mean by that? There's of the Holy Spirit and their powerful, strong weapons. Now, beloved, I believe that this is the answer. If you go back for a moment, just for a moment, in Romans chapter 7, I believe this is the answer to the anxiety of Romans chapter 7. Because in Romans chapter 7, verse 14 to 25, Paul grew, go through this whole anxiety of the struggle in his own life, and he says, on the other hand, I want to do right, and on the other hand, I want to find, I find myself do, doing wrong. The thing I do not want to do, I do, uh, things I don't want to do, I do. And it says, O wretch man that I am, in verse 24, who will deliver me out of this body of death. In other words, you have this tremendous tension, this tremendous anxiety of a man who hungers after the law of God, who longs for God's best, who loves God's truth, who desires to obey God's principle, but he finds with him a, no, a hesitancy. He finds a power within him that holds him back, and it is summed up in the verse 25. With my mind, I serve the law of God. With the flesh, with the flesh, the law of sin. And we've been through all of that in chapter 7. But the anxiety of that tension is resolved in the understanding that you can have that victory over the flesh because you now have the weapons that you can find. You can fight the, the weapon against the flesh that are not fleshly. And you understand that is a mighty and a spiritual power and that is through the Spirit of God. Now, let me just say another, say it in another simple way, no? bringing all that together. When you became a Christian, the Spirit of God took up residence in your life. No? And with the Spirit of God came the power of God. And that kind of power is mighty enough, no? Na kaya ho niyang durugin ang mga stronghold. Kung sinabi ko natin, kuta, malalaki ko ito kung hindi ko sa basang maduduro, no? Pero ang, ang kapangyarihan na available sa'yo ay mayroong capacity to tear down strongholds, no? Yung mga pinagtataguan ng jablo, pinagtataguan ng demonyo, no? <coughs> Kayang gibain niya ng kapangyarihan ng banal na espiritu. In other words, there is a resource there that can be that can enable you to have victory over Satan and victory over demons and victory over the flesh and bring everything in your life into captivity to the obedience of Christ. Kaya mo daw kahit yung dati ng kinagawian na, na habit ng mga jab, ng jablo at mga demonyo, kaya mong pasunurin sa, sa kapangyarihan ng Banal Espiritu para maging masunurin sa ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo. No? Parang ganito ang sinasabi ng Biblia. Ganito ang sinasabi ko sa summary so natin. Mayro, ang isang mana ng prataya ay may potensyal na maging perfecto. No? Ang isang mana ng prataya ay mayroong potensyal na maging perfecto. Ano ibig sabihin natin maging perfecto? May potensyal ang isang mana ng prataya na hindi magkasala. No? Sa umagitan ng kapangyarihan ng Banal na Spirito. Kasi ang Panginoon sa Kristo hindi nagkasala. No? Mayroong potensyal. Sinasabi ko, mayroong potensyal. No? Because you have the potential to be perfect. 
No? Pero, hindi ho na natin, hindi ho natin nararanasan yan. No? Because of, because ba nang kulang ba tayo sa kapangyarihan? Hindi. The power is there. The, available, the power is always available. No? The problem is our portion no? in availing the power of God. In appropriating the power of God. No? <clears throat> Siguro, tatanong nyo, you mean I got the power to deal with sin in your, my life? Yes. No? You have the power to deal with sin in your life. You have the power to, no, to extend Thing with, to cut off, to put off the sin in your life. And the available power is always available because the Holy Spirit is always in you. No? Tinan natin siya, sabi ni Apostol Pablo, paano daw humangyayari ito? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. No? Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Napakangan daw ang paalala ni Apostol Pablo on how to uh, make or to appropriate the power of God or the Holy Spirit in our life. Ephesians 5.18 Huwag kayong maglalasin sa pagkasisirain damang niyan ang inyong buhay. Sa halip, ay dapat kayo mapuspos ng Espiritu. So, makita ko natin, isang pamilya na talata, no? <clears throat> ano po ang siya sabi niya? Ang susi po dito is in appropriation of the power. And the way to appropriate the available power is to be filled with the Spirit of God. Para ito humbaso kanina. No? Wala po itong, uh, hindi ko pa pwedeng inumin kasi wala pang tubig kanina. Pero ngayon ay nilagyan ko na, meron na itong power na ito, no? to quench my thirst. No? Para alisin yung aking pagkauhaw. No? Pero sabi ko ito, be filled. Ito ho ba yung filled? Hindi pa. No, yung sabihin, unless it is overflowing, no? Then it will be filled. To be filled with the Spirit basically means to have to have habitual permission of your life by the Holy Spirit. Parang ganito. Para ang baso nito ay ma-fill, kailangan ito ay ano? Mapuno ng tubig. Ganon din ang ating buhay, no? You think His thought, His feelings, no? You obey His will, it's to be controlled by the Spirit of God. Probably you're controlled by whatever fills your mind. I repeat, tayo po ay kontrolado ng lahat ng bagay na pumupuno sa ating kaisipan. At kung ano po ang pumupuno sa iyong kaisipan, yan po ang kumukontrol sa iyo. Maliwanag po yan, no? Basin ninyo, di ba pag amin pag ginulat kayo, ano nang sinasabi nyo? Bakit to? O, sabi yung mga psychologists, kasi yan ang nasa isip mo. No? Basin ninyo rin po, pag inuga po natin ito, parang ginulat po natin yung sa tao. Pag inuga natin ito, ano lalabas dito? Anong matatapon? Tubig o tubig nila nandun. Yan, tubig. Pwede bang matapon dito soft drinks? Hindi po. Hindi. Di ba? <clears throat> Kasi wala naman soft drinks siya. So, anong laman nung, kung anong laman, yun ang matatapon. Ngayon din po sa ating buhay. No? Ang sabi, na, sabi natin, uh, you are controlled but what? fills your mind. No? <clears throat> Parang din sa ating computer. Kung ano inilagay mo sa iyong computer, yan ang pumupuno sa iyong computer. No? Whatever controls your mind is going to control your behavior. I repeat, whatever is controlling your mind, that it will also control your behavior. And if the Spirit of God no, can control your mind, Then you'll have the mind renewed in the spirit. Doon lamang po mangyayari yung Romans chapter 12. If the Holy Spirit controls our mind. As the Bible talks about it, you're going to find that fleshes itself up. Ang maaalis yung makalaman no? sa ating pagkatao. No? At lalabas yung mabuti at makadyos na behavior kung ang kaisipan natin ay puno ng banal na Espiritu. So, being kept filled with the Spirit doesn't mean, no, uh, na ikaw ho ay parang, ano ito, nawawala sa sarili, no? Na ikaw ay biglang nagbubulag ta dyan, nagbubulag mo yung bibig, no? Hindi ho yun ang pagiging filled ng banal na Espiritu. Kasi, <laughs> sana lang lahat ho sila, pati sila Pedro, na pospos ang balas ko, nagbubulag ako sana ang bibig nila, no? O nagbabalintungan, nagugulungan, no? Wala akong, hindi ko ganun, no? 
Ang ibig sabihin mo ng being filled by the Holy Spirit is to be controlled by the Holy Spirit. So yun po ang ibig sabihin natin dito. Pansin mo natin ang sinasabi sa talata. Balikan mo natin yun. Ephesians chapter 5. No? Pasino natin uh, Verse 18 So huwag kayong maglalasing sapagkat Ah sorry, verse 17 Huwag kayong maging hangal sa halip unawain ninyo kung ano ang kalaoban ng Panginoon 16 Binitin ninyo ng lubusan para sa mabuti ang bawat pagkakataon sapagkat puno ng kasamaan ang kasalukuyang panahon. Okay. Makikita ko natin, siya sabi na doon, be in control by the Spirit. <clears throat> no? Will result in what? Uh, chapter 6, sabi doon, ano sabi chapter 6 verse 1? Honoring your parents. No? Uh, chapter 5 verse 25 and something, it talks about a loving relationship in the family, husband and wives. No? Sa isang buhay din ho na kontrolado ng Espiritu, sinabi din ho doon, no? you, you are going to sing some hymns and spiritual songs and giving thanks and submitting to God. No? <clears throat> so chapter 4, it talks about, uh, and chapter 5, we talk about masters. No? In other words, no? pag ikaw po ay puspos ng Banyang Espiritu, it will affect all kinds of relationship. No? It will affect every kind of relationship. Now, to help us understand, so basahin natin siya sabi sa Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Colossians chapter 3 verse 16. Ang salita ni Kristo ay hayaan ninyong lubusang manatili sa inyong puso. Turuan ninyo at palalahanan ang isa't isa ng may buong karunungan. Buong puso kayong umawit ng mga salmo, mga imno at mga aliting espiritual ng may Pagpapasalamat sa Diyos. Okay. Kung makikita natin, it is parallel na siya sabi ni Apostol Pablo sa Ephesians, no? <clears throat> so, sabi ko sa verse 16, you have the Psalms, the hymns, and the spiritual songs. You have the giving things. The whole thing, everything is there as a result. The same result are here in Ephesians chapter 5, no? But only the thing that produces the result is different. This time, it does, it does not say, be filled with the Spirit. Ang sabi doon, let the Word of God dwells in you richly or abundantly. So, makikita ko natin, but be, that being filled with the Spirit of God is being filled with the Word of God. That is very synonymous, no? Being filled with the Spirit of God is almost the same with being no, filled. With the word of God. <clears throat> so, makitaw natin, being filled with the word of God and being, no, being filled with the word of Christ. You get the, you get the same results. Therefore, it must be the same. Being controlled by the Spirit is the same as being controlled with the word of Christ. I repeat. Being controlled by the Spirit is the same as being controlled by the Word of Christ. If you want to get real practical, if you want to live a Spirit-filled life, don't look for some ecstatic experience. No? O sinabi natin, ecstatic experience, yung hindi mo maintindihan. No? Yung bigla high and low. No? Uh, parang bigla ang tinamaan ng tila. No? Uh, hindi ko yun. No? Naalala ko nung uh, nagtuturo ko sa sa Muntinlupa. May kasama kami doon na spirit uh, Spiritista, no? Pag nag-preach so sila, bago sila mag-preach, biglang mag- Gano'n, ano? Tapos biglang, ako uh, ano na sasabihin, no? Hindi ko gano'n, no? As you chat saturate your soul and your heart and your mind with the truth of God, it begins to flesh out in a spirit-controlled behavior. That's why we have so long and so diligently and so hard advocated the priority of the study of God's precious truth. There must be a saturation of the light so that katulad po ng computer, whenever your buttons are pressed, your involuntary responses are godly. Ulitin ko po. Kung gusto ko natin ang ating involuntary responses, ano ba yung involuntary responses? Sample ka ng involuntary responses. Sample ka. Ah, wala kasi wala kang involuntary responses. Na. Ang involuntary responses ganito. 
yung hindi mo akalain, ano ba, yung may ginulat ka, biglang kung anong susunabi, yun ang sinasabi natin, involuntary responses. No? Biglang may tinapik ka, biglang may tinapik mo, biglang nanununtok. No? That's the involuntary responses. No? <clears throat> ano sinasabi natin? Kung gusto mo daw ang involuntary responses mo, is uh, godly. Punuin mo yung mga bagay, yung kaisipan mo ng tungkol sa mga sa Diyos. No? At ito'y makatutulong mo sa iyo sa to act or to respond in every situation. Halimbawa, may aksidente. No? Anong karaniwang responses? Tatlong karaniwang responses. Tumakbo ka, matulala ka, o gumawa ka ng aksyon. No? Kung ano po ang pumupuno sa kaisipan mo, yun ang magiging response mo involuntarily. No? Automatic na ho yan. <clears throat> Kasi yun ang, uh, yun ang pumupuno sa kaisipan mo. No? So, uh, kaya napakalaga kung anong nilalaman ng ating puso. Kaya di ba yung pagkabisan, may ginulat ka kung anong sinasabi. Bakit? Kasi yun ang posibleng laman ng kanyang isip at laman ng kanyang puso. No? Kaya yun ang kanyang sinasabi. No? <clears throat> di ba? Kung gusto mo hong maging spiritual sa iyong reaksyon, eh... Dapat puno ng isbagay na spiritual ang iyong puso. No? Pero hindi ka po makapag-react spiritually kung hindi puno ng espiritu ng Diyos ang iyong divine. So, makikita mo natin, ang paglago sa ating buhay, it depende kung sino ang may control ng ating buhay. So, it's a day-by-day -day awareness of the truth of God. No? You not only take it in, you meditate on it. No? And if you meditate on it, it controls your thinking. Naalala nyo, siya sabi doon sa uh, verse 5. No. Pagpasa ulit verse 5. Ang namumuhay ayon sa hilig ng laman ay walang pinapahalagahan kundi ang mga bagay na ukol sa laman. Ngunit ang mga namumuhay ayon sa espiritu ay nagpapahalaga sa mga bagay na espiritual. Sa English po, ang ginasabi ko yung translation na namumuhay ay thinking, no? If you are thinking about the things of the place. So, your thinking controls your behavior. So, the power is in us to kill sin because is there a power of the Holy Spirit that is available of us and you cannot deny that, no? <clears throat> hindi mo pwede masabi, ay, hindi ko kayang pagtanggup pa yan, pastor, ang kasalanan. No? Hindi ko talaga kayang gawin. It is not a question of available power. It is a question of available will on your part. I repeat. No. Ang pagtatagumpay po sa kasalanan is not on the question of available power. Kaya mo ba? Hindi ko yun. Hindi ko yung pinag-uusapan niya. Ang tanong ay meron, gusto mo bang magtagumpay laban sa kasalanan? It's the question of will, not of power. It is a question of will. Will you do it? No. A question or or a question of whether or not saturating your heart and mind with the things of God and His Word. Pangalawa. So, ano ang first element natin? The power of victory. No. The second element is that's the Holy Spirit. Second element is the people of victory. The people of victory. And we see the power of victory. Eh? That's the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> now I want to show you the people of victory. The people of victory, just to touch the base with every part of this text in verse 12. No? Therefore, brethren, we are debtors. Sa Tagalog, Rebas Tagalog. Mga kapatid, wala tayong panalagutang Sundin ang mga hilig ng laman upang mamuhay ay sa katawang makalaman. And the people of victory are brethren, no? Mga kapatid. And as I said earlier, there's no victory for people who are not in the family of God. So the people of victory is brethren. Or mga kapatid, no? Brethren is a word for Christian. No. So, tatlong bagay yun ang oh, 
Sa pagtawag ko ng sinasabing brethren, it carries uh, two notes, no? First is a note of love, no? There is a sweetness to that word. And the very word brethren as a way of sweetening the power of this exhortation, so it does not hit us too hard. It's a word of love, no? It's a word of love. A word of affection. It's a word of warmth. It's a word of sympathy. But also, it is also a word of equality. No, hindi lamang po siya term of endearment. It is also a term of equality. And that's a wonderful thing to know. That he serves the same Lord that we serve. Apostle Paul is saying that I am serving the same Lord as you are serving. Is the same Lord that we are same serving. So, ang pag, pag tinawag ho niyang brethren, ibig sabihin, we are equal in the eyes of the Lord. Sinasabi niya, your struggle is the same as my struggle, and my struggle is the same as your struggle. And so, the people of victory are the brethren, the ones who know the, and the love, who know and experience the love of the Lord, and belong to what? And belong to the family of the Lord. The rest of the world will never know victory. No? Hindi hulog ang buong mundo ay makakaranas ng pagkatagumpay. Ang makakaranas ng punang tagumpay ay ang mga anak ng Diyos. The rest of the world will never be able to overcome their human corruption. No? They, may, uh, they may divert into religion that gives, that gives them a certain amount of apparent uh, goodness in their lives. No? It, it is the cleaning of the outside of their life. That is a morality, no? Pero hindi huwag bibigay sa kanila ng katawang natin. Ultimate victory over the flesh. It's not just another way for the flesh to handle it. They feel better being moral than they do being immoral, no? They want to feel better, no? Sila ko ang pwedeng magawa ng hindi mano ng palataya. Pero sa mga mano ng palataya, mayroon ho siya, no? Mayroon ho siyang pagtatumpay. Yun ang pinapangako ng banal na kasulatan. Maliwanag yan sa sinabi ni Apostol Juan, no? na ang mga anak ng Diyos ay nagtatagumpay. Tingnan natin, maganda. 1 John chapter 5, no? 1 John chapter 5, verse 4. Una Juan, kapitulo 5, talatang 4. Sapagkat napapagtagumpayan ang mga anak ng Diyos ang sandibutan, at nagtatagumpay tayo sa pangamagitan ng pananang palataya. Okay, di ba? Maliwanag yan. Ang meron lamang pong tagumpay ay ang mga anak ng Diyos. <clears throat> Pangatlo. No? Pangatlo is the privilege of victory. Pangatlo is the privilege of victory. <clears throat> we saw the power of victory and the people of victory. Just a word about privilege of victory and it's bound up in one word. No? The first word of verse 12. Ano ang first word ng verse 12? Mga kapatid. Ayan. Sa, sa English ay therefore. No? Therefore. Pasinin na din. Saan ba nang kumpisa ang Roman chapter 8? Therefore. No? Therefore. No? Kaya nga. So, what part is the there for? What are we hooking up with? No, as we got into it, it <clears throat> parang uh, ganito lang yan. No, pag sinabi ko natin free bullets. No, <clears throat> yamang tayo po iniligtas ng Diyos. No, meron siyang there for. No, uh, Medyo, medyo, sab, medyo salaw ito doon sa uh, exegetical study natin. No? Pero ginamit na muna natin, no? because God has given us what we call a privileged position. No? A privileged position of no condemnation. Which is given to us by grace through faith. Because of the reality of the great gospel that has delivered us from sin. And that is a privileged position. No? which is in Christ, no? position in the gospel because of our salvation, because of our freedom from death, no? freedom from sin, and righteousness in Christ. 
because we have a new nature that is our privilege, the gift of the Spirit, the hope that we have, the joy that we have, the peace that we have, the love that we have. All is because of Christ, because of all those bread privileges. Kaya sinabi niya, therefore, brethren, we are debtors. No, you see, this is a great truth. We ought to know this, and we ought to remember all of this. All the New Testament exhortation is always based on the statement about privilege. And if you read Paul's epistle, you will note that this is his mark mean of teaching. When you come to chapter 12 of Romans, sabi niya, I beseech you, therefore, brethren. No? The same thing in Philippians, in fact, that therefore we are all over the places. You have the chapter 1, a great privilege and the marvelous privileges. In chapter 2, if there is a, therefore any consultation, consolation, no? So exhortation is always based on an understanding of the privilege. And that's why we have to know what God has done for us because we, before we can understand what we ought to respond to it. No? Kinakailangan natin maunawaan ang lahat to ng ginawa sa atin ng Diyos. At ang lahat ng ginawa sa atin ng Diyos ay mga privilegyo na ibinigay natin. At pag naunawaan po natin ang mga privilegyo ito, magtatagumpay tayo because you can respond for, on that privileges based on the proper understanding of the privileges that you have. Ano ang bawa? Anong privileges na meron ka dahil kay Kristo? Hmm. Anong privilege na meron ka dahil kay Kristo? Marami yan. O, oh, yun. <clears throat> Kasama ang tagapagbana. At yaman kaya pagmana ka ni Kristo, ano ang dapat response mo? Kung naunawaan mo yung pagiging tagapagmana ni Kristo, ano ang tamang response ng isang tagapagmana ni Kristo? Obey His word po. <clears throat> Nakita niyo po, ang proper understanding of our privileges, do, siya ang, ang, ano, siya ang magsasabi sa iyo at makatutulong sa iyo to react properly. Halimbawa, sabi natin, tagapagmana ka ni Kristo, no? iingatan mo ang iyong posisyon. Apo ba? Iingatan mo ang iyong posisyon na isang tagapagmana. Later on, madidiscuss po natin yan. No? Iingatan mo ang iyong posisyon. So, pangapat. No? Pangapat po natin na P is the pattern for victory. The pattern for victory. The pattern for victory. Sabi niya dito, it says we are debtors that to the flesh, to live after the flesh, implied but to, to no. Ang implication mo niya is but to the spirit, to live after the spirit. No? Tayo dapat mamuhay ayon sa spirito. If you live after the flesh, you shall die. But if you through the spirit, do kill the deeds of the body, you shall live. No? Yan ang maliwanan na sinabi ni Apostol Pablo. Now, let's, par let's, let's follow the plan for victory. First of all, para ho tayo magtagumpay, we are not to live after the flesh. So, that is our first point, no? The pattern for victory is not living after the flesh. Dahil wala tayong utang sa flesh, no? Sa laman, wala naman nung naitulong sa atin ang laman, No? Maging ang kautusan, walang natulo sa atin, maliban sa pagpapaunawa sa atin ng ano, ng ating mga kamalian. At magtulak sa atin, papunta sa ating Panginoong Yesu Kristo. All the flesh could do was condemn you. All the flesh can do is damn you. No? All the flesh can do is to uh, pahinain ka and to hold you down into the pit which you were born. You know nothing to the flesh. You owe nothing to the flesh. So you're not a debtor to live after the flesh. Now, as a Christian, you're no longer after the flesh. No? Back in verse 5. Ano siya sabi sa verse 5? Ang mga namumuhay ay sa hilig ng laman ay walang pinapahalagahan kundi ang mga bagay na ukoy sa laman. Ngunit ang mga namumuhay ay sa espiritu ay nagpapahalaga sa mga bagay na espiritual. So, we're not after the, the spirit. No? So, we're after the spirit. We're in the spirit in terms that Paul is using here. So here's the point. 
If we are not after the flesh, why we should live after the flesh? Now keep in mind that the flesh, and you need to understand what the term means. The flesh is the ugly complex of human sinful desire. No. Ulitin ko po. The flesh is the ugly complex of human sinful desire. It involves motive, affection, principle, purpose, and all the evil generates within us. Kaya nga sabi ni Santiago, tayo natutukso because of the flesh. Tingnan natin sa Santiago chapter 1 verse 13. Huwag sabihin ni Numan, 1.13 po. Huwag sabihin ni Numan na inutokso siya ng Diyos kapag siya'y dumaranas ng pagsubok. Sapagkat ang Diyos ay hindi maaaring matukso at hindi rin naman niya tinutokso ang kahit sino. Yan. <clears throat> Diretso. Natutokso ang tao kapag siya'y naaangkit at nagpapatangay sa kanyang sariling pagnanasa. <clears throat> Ito niyo po. That is the sinful desire. No? The motives and affection and the principle and purposes of the flesh. And to live after the flesh is to be ruled by that complex. To be guided by that complex. It's totally contradictory for brethren who are in the spirit, after the spirit, minding the things of the spirit, walking in the spirit, to be going out and thinking they owe something to the flesh. You don't owe anything to the flesh. You've been freed from sin and death. You've been made a new creation. You've been transformed. You don't know anything to that. And then he restate the reason in verse 13. No? Pahay ba sa ulit sa atin verse 13? Sapagkat tumamatay kayo kung namumuhay kayo ayon sa katawang makalaman. Ngunit kung pinapatay ninyo sa pamamagitan ng Espiritu ang mga gawa ng katawang makalaman, magbubuhay kayo. The reason kung bakit hindi daw tayo dapat mamuhay ayon sa laman, sabi niya, For if you live after the flesh, you shall die. This is the statement of fact. No, hindi ko siya nabobola dito. He is not describing a Christian there. He is not even threatening a Christian there. He is simply stating the fact. Sabi niya, O, oh, pag namuhay ka sa kasalanan, patay ka na. No? Hindi ko siya nagbabanta. Sinasabi niya ko dito ang katotohanan. O ang namumuhay sa laman ay patay, ang siya sabi ko ng banal na Biblia, at hindi niya po pwedeng bigyan ng karangalan ang Diyos. No? Kaya nga sabi ni Apostol Pablo sa Galatians chapter 6, verse 8, He who sows to, the, to his flesh shall reap of the flesh, shall reap of corruption, but he that sows to the Spirit shall of the Spirit reap life everlasting. Same idea. People who are in the flesh, of the flesh, after the flesh, minding the things of the flesh, walking in the flesh, sowing to the flesh are dead. People in the Spirit, after the Spirit, minding the Spirit, the things of the Spirit, walking on the Spirit are alive. And that's what we goes on to say. But if you through the Spirit are killing the deeds of the body, you give evidence of being alive. Ulitin natin, pag ikaw daw ay pinapatay mo sa magitan ng Espiritu ang mga gawa ng laman, ito ay indikasyon na ikaw ay buhay. Tama po ang sinasabi ng Puritan. No? Balikan natin yung ating kasasaya. Anong ibig sabihin ng Puritan? Uh, to purify the church. Yan. Sabi ko ng mga Puritan, ito ang kanilang kasabihan. If you don't kill sin, it will kill you. If you don't kill sin, it will kill you. And that's exactly what this text is saying to us. That's why Jesus said, if you've got a sin problem, you better hack off your arm. Putulin mo ang iyong kamay, putulin mo ang iyong mata, ngalisin mo ang iyong mata. No? Sa halip na ikaw ay mapunta sa impyerno na kompleto ang katawan. No? Eh, basta butin putol ang bahagi ng katawan na mapunta ka naman sa langit. Ang ibig sabihin mo, you need to deal with sin drastically. No? So Paul is making a powerful point. He says, you owe nothing to the flesh, nothing at all, that is for dead and dying unbelievers. If you live after the flesh, you're spiritually dead, he says. You're not even a Christian, so why would you want to act like that? You say, well, can a Christian ever do something fleshly? Sure. Remember, in 1 Corinthians 3, nung sinulatan ni Apostol Pablo ang mga mano ng protesta, sabi niya, hindi ako makapagsalita sa inyo kasi kayo ay ano, mga makalaman pa, no? Mayroong mga divisions ay nyo, mayroong mga argumentos ay nyo. And again, sa Romans chapter 7, sabi niya, it's a battle. Sometimes we win, sometimes we lose. 
But the bent, remember that, the bent of life is toward the things of the Spirit. All this is such an important understanding in the Scripture. Look at the Philippians for just a minute, you know, in chapter 3. Subukan mo natin, Philippians chapter 3. Basahin natin verse 7. Ngunit dahil kay Kristo, ang mga bagay na pinapahalagahan ko noon ay tinurin kong walang kabuluhan ngayon. Verse 9. At lubos na makipag-isa sa Kanya. At ang aking pagiging matuwid ay hindi sa pamamagitan ng pagsunod sa kautusan, kundi sa pananalig kay Kristo. Ang pagiging matuwid ko ngayon, buhat sa Diyos, sa pamamagitan ng pananampalataya. First step. Ang tanging hangarin ko ngayon ay lubos sa pamagala si Kristo. Para nasa ng kapangyarihan ng Kanyang muling pagkakuhay, makibahagi sa Kanyang mga paghihirap at maging natulad niya sa Kanyang kamatayan. Nakita niyo po? <clears throat> Hindi ba naranasan ni Apostol Pablo ang kahirapan ng Tulong Kristo? Yes, naranasan ang naranasan niya, di ba? <clears throat> Pero, hindi pa rin niya napapag, nasa, na, natatapatan, no? To know the communion of suffering, and so forth and so on, he says, I want to attain the resurrection of the dead, in verse 11, no? Wait a minute, no? Sabi natin, uh, yun ang binigay ng Diyos kay Apostol Pablo, but I know there's a part of me to do, sabi niya, No? In verse 12, I want to live as I've got some, no? To know Him and the power of His resurrection. Yun po ang kaisipan na, ni, ni Apostol Pablo. Ang naisin niya ay lubusang makilala ang ating Panginoong Yesu Cristo. That is a marvelous thought. He's saying, yes, I believe I'm saved by grace, but I also know that everything in my being wants to pursue that with all my heart, and even though my flesh holds me back, that is the pursuit of my heart. Not the, now that as a mark of a Christian. No? Sabi niya, verse 13, I do not consider that I have gotten it already. But this one thing I do, for God forgetting the things that are behind, if you think about those all the time, you'll get a mess. I reach to the things that are before and I press toward the mark for the price of high calling. And the high calling is in Jesus Christ. I'm not there, kasi sabi ni Apostol Pablo, and I'm sure I'll, be, I'll get there. No? And then he goes on, and finally in verse 21, sabi niya, When the Lord changes my vile body, and this, no, dun pa lamang magiging katulad ako ng ating Panginoon sa Kristo. So the whole idea of chapter 3 is that Paul has a tremendous passion to know God and to fellowship with Christ and to know all the power that is available to him. But he knows that the vent of his life and there are times when he's interrupted in that pursuit by the flesh. So we're not saying that hindi humangyayari yon. But again, if you're a person who habitually lives after the flesh, you give evidence of being on your way to eternal death. And that's a truism. And the presence of holiness is an absolute in the life of true Christian. It is an absolute, no, sa buhay ng mana ng palataya. So Paul says here, the pattern for victory. You owe nothing to the flesh. Get that right, no. Don't give it anything. Give it nothing. Since wala kang utang, wala kang mabiyanan. Yun siya sabi ng Apostol Pablo. Balikan mo natin siya sabi sa chapter 6, no. Sabi niya, well then, what shall we sin that grace may abound? It was niya sabi niya, since you owe nothing to the flesh, no, wag mong bayaran yung, wag mong ibigay ang iyong katawan sa flesh. Then it goes into the thing, if you died with Christ and risen with Christ in the newness of life, what in the world would you ever think about going back in the flesh again? No. Let's look at the other side, the pattern, no? But if you through the Spirit, now we're back to the power of victory, no? Do kill the deeds of the body, you shall live. This is another truth, no? This is another fact. It looks at salvation from the side of the behavior of the same. And may encourage you that this is a valid look. You can look at salvation from the side of God and His sovereignty, or the side of man and His behavior. And this looks at the behavior. It says, If you through the power of the Spirit are killing the deeds of the body, then you give evidence of being one who is truly a possessor of life. Ano siya sabi dito, Apostol Pablo? <clears throat> o ikaw daw po, ang katawan mo daw ay nagpapakita ng ebidensya na ang banal spirito nga ay nananahan sa iyo, ipinakikita nito sino ba talaga ang tunay na ninirahan sa iyo. So makikita ko natin dito, no? 
ang katangian ng tunay na krisyano. is going to spend himself pursuing the things of the Spirit. Ang tunay na mana ng protaya, ang hinahangan niya ay ang mga bagay na naukol sa Espiritu. He's going to desire to kill the flesh. Yes, he will have lapses. Meron mo siyang pagnanasa na patayin si kasalanan. No. But the pursuit is going to be the things of God to stop him out sin in his life. That is the believer's pattern. No. Ang pattern ng mana ng protaya ay nasahin na no? Napatayin si kasalanan. No. Dahil tanda ho natin, Uh, masamang boss si kasalanan no? So parang tagatatulong nyo Papaano ba malalaman ko ako nga talaga yung kristyano no? Dahil sinabi ng Biblia Nakapagtisimang pala tayo sa kanya Ikaw yung malintas no? The second reason na para mataya ko natin Na tayo mana ng plataya If you see victory over sin no? If you see in your life victory over sin Hindi natin sinasabi yun, yun that you become always victorious over sin. Pero, there is a pattern of victory over sin. Yan po ang isang kumbinsidong argumento na tunay kang mana ng plataya. Dahil ang isang hindi mana ng plataya, kailanman hindi nagtatumpay sa kasalanan. Now, notice it says that you must kill the deeds of the body. Now, the body here stands for the flesh. And it has the idea of standing in the place of the flesh represented by the body. which is the bridge to sin. To sin. It comes to the our gate, eye gate, or the ear gate, or the senses gate. No. So, balikan mo natin sa sabi chapter 6 and chapter 7. Sa tinatalakay na Apostol Pablo about the flesh, the mortal body, the body of sin, the body of this death. Our sin is in that flesh, the body, that mortality, the humanness. No. It does not exclude our mind, our feeling. That's all part of it. But believers are those who are in constant process by the spirit residence, power of killing the deeds of the flesh. Well then, that's not an expectation. Hindi ho yan pagbibigay kalakasan. Yan po ay pagsasabi ng katotohanan. No? <clears throat> Ito po ay nagbibigay sa atin ng kalakasan dahil yan ang katotohanan ng isang mano ng palataya. No? Okay. Begin explain na lang muna natin yung last word natin, the word mortify. No? The word mortify. <clears throat> ano ba siya sabi ng word mortify? Tingnan mo na siya sabi sa 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 18. <clears throat> sa pagtan si Kristo, na walang kasalanan ay namatay ng minsan para sa inyo na mga makasalanan upang iharap kayo sa Diyos Siya'y pinatay sa lamang at muling binuhay sa Espiritu. So, ang abatay ng Maliklisto, totoo hindi? <coughs> Mayroon nung kasing tsuri na si Jesus daw ay nahimatay. No? Nung siya ay naipasok sa libingan, nabuhay. Ah, ano ang tawag doon pag nahimatay? Tapos biglang nagising. Ang tawag doon nabuhay ba yan? O nagbuhay buhay yan? Pag nahimatay ka, tapos nagising ka, ang tawag doon? Nahimasin. Nahimasin. na yung mas masang. <clears throat> Ang sasabi ko dito mortify ay totoong kamatayan. No? <clears throat> It's not a reckoning of death. It is not an assuming of death. It is an actual killing. You've got to kill sin by the power of the Spirit. No? Pag sinabi natin kill, dead. No? That's what we're called to do. Tayo po'y tinawag para no? patayin ang kasalanan sa magitan ng isa. Kaya ikaw ay ano? mamamatay kasalanan. Ang isang mana ng plataya ay executor, mamatay ng kasalanan. <clears throat> Hindi ko tayo katulad ni Apostol Sa ni I'm sorry, ni Saulo. Ni Saul pala, sorry, Saul. Nalalayo yung utusan si Saul. Sabi ng Diyos kay Saul, ano? Lipuli mo lahat. Ano tinanong ginawa ni Saul? Nagtira siya ng konti, no? Tinira niya yung matataba para ihandog daw sa Diyos, no? <clears throat> so, sa atin din po ganun. Huwag natin tularan sa Saul. Kung sinabi sa atin ng Diyos, patayin lahat, patay lahat. Wala kayong ititira. <clears throat> no. Bakit? Because we owe nothing to the flesh. In Colossians chapter 3, <clears throat> no. uh, verse 5, no? Colossians chapter 3, verse 5. Kahit patayin na ninyo ang mga pagnanasang makamundo, Ang pakikiapid, ikaromihan, mahalay na simbolyo ng damdamin, 
masamang pagnanasa at mga kasakiman sa na isang uwi ng pagsamba sa Dios Dios. <clears throat> Anong utos diyan? Patayin niya. So, if you belong to Christ, sabi diyan, patayin. It's in your members, same concept. It's in your flesh, it's in your humanness. He says, since you have put off the old man, the old man was our former life. It's gone, it's gone. You put it off. Since you put it off, then make sure you kill off all that's residual. No? And you've got to be busy killing sin. So when you came to Christ and you were forgiven of your sin, hindi ho doon natapos ang ating responsibility. Nag-uumpisa pa lang ang ating responsibility. Now you will spend the rest of your life trying to kill off sin. Now you have noticed how hard it is. I mean, you could beat the stuff in the head to death, but to think, no. Uh, pag pag piyatay mo siya, bigla ako sisipot tuloy. No? Sumisipot tuloy, sumisipot. Uh, sabi ni John Owen sa kanya aklat, Sin is never less quiet no, than when it seems to be most quiet. And its waters are for the most part deep when they are still. And sin would love to, be, to lull you into a sense of security, and it does. You knock off some of the big sins, you know. You don't have a problem with stealing cars and murdering people and committing fornication and rape and armed robbery and all of that. But what you lose sight of is the fact that those other things in your life that mark your personality. Ano daw po yung other things in your life that mark your personality? Like in anger, bitterness, ill will, and all that you don't ever deal with. And sin is saving the heyday while you think you're having a great victory over the big sin. Don't kid yourself. The battle will go on as long as you live. You will never in this world get out of Romans chapter 7. But you can know victory. You can know victory. And don't let anybody come along and say, I have the spiritual secret. I breached the plane of consecration. Wala pong ganon. Hindi po yung totoo. Habang nandito po tayo sa bubuhay. No. Nandyan ho ang pagbabatel, ang paglalaban sa kasalanan. Andyan pa rin yung trabaho natin na tayo tayo, no? Ang tawag natin, executor of sin. Tayo yung mamamatay yung ang kasalanan. Para mapatay ho natin ang kasalanan, ano ho dapat natin gawin? Una, we need to recognize the presence of sin in our flesh. We need to recognize the presence of sin in our flesh. Pag hindi po natin na-recognize yan, wala kang papatayin, No? So, para mo mapatay, dapat makilala mo ang kasalanan. No? Maunawaan mo ano ang kasalanan. Pangalawa, have a heart fixed on God. Have a heart fixed on God. Maliwanan ko yan sa sinasabi sa Psalms 57, 7. Psalms 57, 7. Tingnan natin siya sa Psalms 57, 7. Psalms 57, niya ako, O Diyos, ako ngayon matatag. Purihin ka at awitin ka ng awiting was sila. <clears throat> Pangatlo, meditate on the word of God. Meditate on the word of God. Tanda ho natin, no? Puan ho laman ng ating puso at laman ng ating isip. Yun ang lumalabas sa ating bibig at sa ating magali. No? And number four, commune with God in prayer. Commune with God in prayer. No? Commune with God in prayer. At lastly, you must cultivate obedience. You must cultivate obedience. You must cultivate. So you recognize sin, fix your heart on God, meditate on the word of God, commune in prayer, walk in obedience to His word, and you will be killing sin. Ulitin po. If you recognize sin, fix your heart on God, meditate on the word, commune in prayer, walk in obedience to His word, and you will be killing sin in your life. Once again po, if you have questions, uh, okay, mga komento, ang nais kong maging maliwanan sa atin, no. uh, bigyan nyo naman po kami ng komento sa amin ng mga, sa ating mga discussion, no. uh, masaya po kami na ipapaliwanan o pag-aralan po natin mabuti o paglalo pa po natin maunuan ang bahagi na kasulatan. Once again po, maraming salamat po, NBA of Forest, Carnival, Theological Seminary.